This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Long Beach, California. I am here with Coherent Educational Solutions. Since 2017, they have been committed to ending social injustice for underserved students by equipping educational communities with innovative solutions. I'm joined by Dr. Jamie. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. I mean, quite honestly, you've got 25 plus years that you have in the educational field. Um, you've really done it all. You've been everything from a bus driver to a math teacher, all the way to an administrator, as well as a superintendent, um, an adjunct professor, many types of school that you've worked with out there, be it public or charter. Share with us how this student-focused passion began for you. Thank you very much. The student-focused passion began for me when I was a student. It was the fact that I wanted a change in my own education to land where I'm at today. I'll never forget the day that I made that decision was the day that I was walking up the trailer court parkway back to my home as a junior in high school selling candy to go to New York City to sing at the, at the hall in New York City. I have to tell you, I, I made the decision then, kids shouldn't have to be doing this in order to do that. And it was that day I made the decision, I'm gonna work for kids who are in a situation like mine so that they wouldn't have to have these kinds of trials in order to experience life outside and what, what life experience can be had. Since I've been in California, for example, I've worked with youth who live less than 10 miles away from the beach who've never been to the beach. That's, that's irresponsible of educators at some point because we need to provide these life experiences for kids so that they too can have the opportunity to experience and feel and, and, and just know what life has to offer. So this passion began for you many years ago. I mean, quite honestly, really every community out there wants the best education for their children. It's safe to say not all are getting that. Um, the goal is really to transform education. Why are the programs you're providing today maybe even more in need than they were back in New York City when it began? Well, you know, it's not about programs, I have to tell you. It's about the way in which we educate children completely. We still educate children as if we're in an industrial-aged kind of country. Yeah. We are well advanced. As a matter of fact, it's the, all, all the content kids could ever want is within the palm of their hand in their cell phone. Yet we're still stuck on in what year was Abraham Lincoln president? It's not about the fact that he was president or the year that he was president, or maybe even the fact that he was a president during the Civil War that matters. What matters is what are the learnings that come from that that influences today and helps us solve problems for tomorrow? And so frankly, what we're doing is we're looking at the World Economic Forum's top 10 job skills for 2025 and 2030. And we realize that those job skills have very little to do with content and most everything to do with what we call social emotional learning. Hmm. And really it's about those, and I don't like using this term soft skills, but it is those skills of how to collaborate, how to self-regulate, how to critically think wow. that will get the largest pieces of the jobs to help America be the uh, competitor in economy that it needs to be in 25 and 30. And so it's our responsibility to do that. So my partner, Dr. Dion Claybaugh and myself have developed a framework that actually marries this notion of academics and SEL to bring the whole thing together. And I have to say one more thing about that issue. How many, how many times in life do you solve a problem by going 45 minutes of math, 45 minutes of science, 45. No, it doesn't work that way. It is, it is what it is. How then can we give kids the opportunity to deal with life within the safety of our schools to then learn content and apply content so that, so that the uh, uh, solutions come from the mouths of babes rather than us being imparters of knowledge. So rote memorization is definitely not what we're looking at there at all. I mean, this is educational consulting you provide. Are, is this provided to the frontline workers? We're talking about the teachers. We're talking about those behind the scenes in the administration or possibly both. 
it's every person within the educational system at the end of the day. Because quite frankly, the environment has to be set so that the uh, intrinsic motivation is activated. And, and to have intrinsic motivation activated, according to the self-determination theory, there's got to be three psychological needs met. One has to be belonging, two has to be competence, and three has to be the efficacy of the learner and the agency of the learner them, themselves. Once those are met, then a, a intrinsic motivation is activated. We've done our job. You know what happens when intrinsic motivation happens. Look at you. Those that are doing the teaching um, in your team, we're talking, these are leaders in that arena. These teams that are led by former school administrators, instructional specialists, I mean, most of these have some pretty advanced training. Is that important to the success of the whole program? Yeah, the training is important. And one thing about training that, that we really have to understand, we have to do it much differently than what we've done before as well. Because what we seem to think is, oh, let's drop in and give them a professional development day at $4,000 a day. And, well, it's on them. No, if we really want this to work, we need to not only give them some sit and get, we need to provide coaching and mentoring coupled with that so that they can hone their skills and practice with integrity with a coach and a mentor so that they can grow their practice in these areas. Because frankly, some of the things, uh, there's only six tools. Some of those tools will not come as naturally as one might think. Like for example, if you're having productive struggle, sometimes children go through a crying fit because they just don't get it. Well, how many teachers have said, oh man, stop crying. No, you have to approach it with, hey, I get it. You're right in the middle of it. And you know what? You can do this. And it's just simple things like that that provide that environment for that activation of intrinsic motivation that's absolutely going to change the landscape of what we produce in K-12 education. I mean, we now live in an age where, quite honestly, not all training is done in person. I mean, your type of training, is this done in a group or by individual? I mean, how, how is this delivered? And what do you mean when you talk about uh, synchrony, synchronous versus Asynchronous. What does that mean, basically? Yeah, uh, yeah great, uh, great idea is, uh, that we have is that we can meet anyone, anywhere, thanks to technology. Wow. So what you and I are doing in this interview is a synchronous time. This is you and I live uh, talking together, learning with each other. Asynchronous is items that you can conduct on your own without the facilitator needing to be live with you. And so with that being said, we can meet individually, small group, whole group. We can be in person, however it works. COVID, no COVID, it's that powerful. And, and, and it just takes willing people to step up to the plate and realize that a one day, one test, one time is not the full picture of what a learner can bring to the table. We absolutely believe that learners should show competencies and they should have those benchmarks. And we believe that they should do it when they're humanly developed and ready and able. What we've done wrong in America since No Child Left Behind Act, which has left every child behind, is we have said, for example, if you can't read by the beginning of third grade, then we're going to build prison budgets based on the numbers of kids that aren't fully literate. That's a problem because that doesn't honor the development of each individual human. Let's look at some of these 21st century alternatives, these solutions you provide. Right now we have five different educational services on the screen for the viewers to look at. I mean, because you're really offering a custom approach for each one of these programs that you work with, um, the first thing you do is you, you review the relevant data. Um, you even set up an initial site or classroom evaluation. Is that how you're able to really tailor this program to whoever it is? So, so we do a listening tour. You know, we don't, we, don't say, we don't mean to come across like we know everything, but right. with the experience of the top leadership of our company, we have nearly 100 years of experience at the table. And with that being said, we do have some answers. And so we do a lot of listening. 
And so as we listen, we connect. And when we make those connections, we actually offer back to our partner and we co-construct a pathway that leads them to meet the goals that they have. And when necessary, we absolutely fall in line with the current accountability system of the current state and or you know the federal accountability system that they have. And, and, and we go with it, although we do push against that as much as we possibly can. And I actually believe that's gonna change. So the bottom line is customization is based on what the partner's context and culture demands of it. And our goal is that we then provide them ways to get there that are meaningful for both kids, families, teachers, and community. Because at the end of the day, it takes a village. How, how do the services you provide kind of differ from what you call products, like the fuel, uh, the fuel ED, as well as the career heroes, things like that? How do, how do services, um, are they intertwined together, basically? Yeah, every, every uh, product like Field for Literacy yes. or uh, Career Heroes is built upon that very notion that the learner is at the center and we are going to embed these social emotional quote unquote soft skills within each of those pieces so that it becomes, it becomes rope, it becomes just natural. And so we provide professional development before the implementation of any product. And so guess what? They get it one way or another, buy it through a product or buy it through a person. We're really here to say, you gotta marry both. What we're afraid of is starting, is starting to happen. And that is with wonderful frameworks like Castle, the teachers are asking for curriculum. What do I say? What do I do? Well, I already spoke with a teacher, in, in, and I'm not going to say where, but in the United <laughs> States, who said, you know, we only have time at 11 o'clock to teach SEL, social emotional learning. And what you, yeah, that's exactly what I did. Really? When in your life does SEL only happen at 11 o'clock? And so not, not to be, you know, flippant about it, but, it, but the notion of this whole separation is just really, I don't think, the approach that we need to have. Rather, we need, to, we need to throw a problem in the middle of the room and we need to say, okay, boys and girls, here is a problem for you to think about that's related to the content. Now, how might we ask questions, inquire, build, build that critical thinking, build your own resilience going through it, build your own regulation going through it. Let's identify what that is. And that way they can put names to it, if that makes any sense. And I know that if we, if we just give that time to develop, by the time those kids are seniors, we are going to be a powerhouse in the economy yeah. of a future that yeah. we don't even know what jobs will exist yet. I mean, these products that you're providing, I mean, these are proven tangible solutions. Uh, we're talking about 48-hour targeted intervention, equity-driven learning, student ownership. I mean, there's got to be some new concepts for these teachers out there. And uh, what are some of the feedback you've gotten once they, once they embrace this? Once they embrace it, they absolutely love it because what happens is teachers own the teaching and students own the learning. And the students who are able to articulate think it's the coolest thing ever. Probably the most fun they've had learning in their life at that point. And they equate that with fun because they built the relationship necessary to do what the teachers asked them to do and they feel good about themselves even if they're at different levels of learning. We hear that from students with disabilities, students with second language, students with any kind of behavioral issue in the past somehow turns around. Hmm, hmm. interesting things, huh? All right, I mean, obviously we learn more when we're having fun, we're enjoying it, be it students or teachers. How important is the are the parents in this in this success quotient, if you will, um, are they involved when it comes to some of these strategies? You know, parents are critically important. And, and what we do is we ensure that there are parent involvement opportunities at their convenience to either learn with us by having some of the uh, professional developments used with Title I funding to, to work with our parents and or view synchronous opportunities at their own leisure to then build a network of community who want to learn more. It's all about the desire of the parent to want to be involved. And I'll tell you that if parents saw how happy 
their kids were coming home and they could actually answer the question, what'd you do at school today in a real way? Oh, I think you would see parental involvement increase at every campus level. So the power of questions, regardless if it's a teacher asking, your program That's asking, it. Or the, the parents as well. I mean, let me ask you, the, the services you provide, they're really filling in these learning gaps um, with targeted instruction uh, for each one of the schools you work with. Um, how can others partner up and really help this program to succeed? You know, I think uh, the partners that we currently have uh, are, are innovators. They're ones who believe that the kids absolutely should own the learning and they're willing to do everything they can to support that notion. And the way to get the kids to be able to do that is to influence the adults who are the frontline adults working with them. That's the only way you can do it. So we have partners like the University of California, San Diego, who's willing to look at graduate credit for professional development through our work that moves teachers along the salary scale. We have other partners who develop repositories of, of proficiencies by teachers to then give credit towards master's degrees from credited universities. Mm -hmm. We have states that we're working with to develop programs that are partners because they believe that they have uh, the frontline staff that wants to be able to do it. I tell you, once you see a system start overhauling and start, start learning that we have to respond to what the need is now, and we have to be able to uh, pivot, then, then you're going to see others follow along the way. It's always scary to be school number one, but I'll tell you, we've got school number one, and I think if the, all the partnerships get signed like we have in place, we're probably going to have state number one and state number two with California, I hope to follow. That is, that's exciting. I mean, obviously, it your is. expertise with your years of experience is that in the educational system, in the schools. But honestly, can this also work in corporate America? Is this something that you're able to provide as well? I, absolutely. And that's one thing that we really thought hard about. How do we relate this to corporate America? I think number one, knowing that we're backwards mapping from what the World Economic Forum says are the job skills needs that the corporate has already told them. I think corporate needs to learn how to have an environment that does the same thing. This notion of setting an environment that activates intrinsic motivation can only work to bolster revenue at the end of the day. So I would be honored to sit down with any top CEO, any top board, and say, are you the first corporation that's going to partner with us to show wow. everyone else the results this is will have? That is exciting. I mean, you, it starts with an initial assessment. Um, like you said, you're asking some questions on the front end, even maybe a classroom evaluation. Once the services are provided, how is the... Is there ongoing consultation? Uh, is there professional development that continues? Yeah, absolutely. And it's all at the will of what the partner would like to do with us. And so, you know, we're never too old and have never been in the business long enough to not be mentored. Well, I think, man, let's have a mentor. I still have one, right? Let's have that mentor. So coaching is about skills. Coaching is until you master those skills. So you don't need to coach all of, you know, the whole time. Uh, just as long as it takes for you to learn it. But what we don't do is we don't say, well, by lesson number four, you better have it mastered. Because if you don't, yeah, no. Because it doesn't honor who you are. That's whole part of our system is honoring the dignity of the person that's sitting across from the table from you. Because, you know, yeah. we haven't done that. And I actually believe that part of what we're setting up might improve some of the issues that we're seeing in today's modern society. That's, that's pretty exciting. I mean, really the goal here is to ending social injustice for the underserved, the neglected, uh, the marginalized student you experienced at first hand. Do a lot of yeah. folks out there not realize maybe this problem even exists? I, I, I think people don't know because guess what? We only know how we've been taught, how have all we've been taught. Yeah. 
on a test, circle the answer, A, B, C, or D, you know, or fill in the blank or whatever. And you know what? The bottom line is if the assessment is the robot should follow the path that you program and it does, you're in. If it doesn't, guess what? You're in too. You also have the opportunity to reflect and think about what you do different. And if you can tell me that at the same time, why wouldn't you be successful? That, that's great. Your experience, you've, you've engaged with um, students firsthand all the way back to, like you said, your junior, senior year in high school. Your goal is to improve student outcomes for all students. Is that really what gets you up every morning and does it continue to be rewarding for you? Absolutely, that's what gets me up. And what else gets me up is that I get to choose who I work with. And, and, and the, the other phrase that I've developed is I'm tired of school being done to kids and not with them. And there's a big difference between to and with. Viewers, let's take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see basically is their contact information as well as their website. Um, on the website, you can learn more about the team that is providing these great services and products uh, basically to the, to the educational community out there, but really with a ripple effect that will affect more than just the education But because we're talking about students that are going to become leaders and honestly leaders today that maybe need to learn a whole new concept as well when it comes to um, learning and making sure that the underserved are ba basically getting served across the board in the United States. Check out their products online, services as well. You can sign up for their email. They'll keep you apprised of what they have going on uh, in the program out there. Once again, that is Coherent Educational Solutions, innovating school systems through a culture of belonging where learning meets readiness. This is Gary Atencia with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.